there was a post with the with the, the summary of what Razor said. We can take a look at that too. I know a lot of people asked me to to check it out. And Razor, come what's wrong with Fnatic on the stream? Fans have been toxic. Even if we won, they would send me death threats. We never understood the patch. When we started the game, we've always had 30% ch chance to win the game due to our bad draft. If I have to rate my performance, I would give me a 2. It has been very bad. I think there have been many factors that have been contributing to that. If you know me personally, you know I don't give a fuck about KDA or being flamed on Twitter. I just don't give a fuck. I have to be 0-10 to win the game. I'd do it. Fans will see you being 2-5 and think you're into the game. You might walk my ass working behind the scene, trying everything to keep this team up. I was put in a position where I have to step up. From the outside, many would say that me and Humanoid are inting, but if we don't force the game, I would end up with zero kills, and I hate it when that happens. I think what it means is that if he did nothing, they would just lose, and he would just do nothing, and would end up in a situation where nothing would be the case, you know? Our only gameplay was pass the ball to Huma, and he will carry. Out of our nine games, we only had one good draft. Imo, I've broken my ass working behind the scene, trying everything to keep this team up. I was put in a position where I have to step up. We tried to talk about these things and did not reach an agreement on how to play the game, so there was a negative atmosphere all the time. I feel bad for Fnatic because since the beginning we knew we must win, so I feel very bad to end 2-7 in this org. We had the one month to fix our problems and we didn't, so that's our fault. I gave my 100% and more than that. I was so stressed and I felt that I have to do more than I was doing, so that made me do less for some reason. I don't know what will happen for the next splits. I have zero info. I, um, you know, a very important thing when you talk about players in a team that is clearly dysfunctional is that um, it becomes very difficult to judge players in that context. It's very evident when a team has reached a point of, you know, when a team is very dysfunctional and they don't know the solution to their problems and the, uh, that, that weight of those problems keeps creeping in heavier and heavier because you realize that you can't get away with them. Sometimes you are lucky. Sometimes you're very lucky. A patch comes in and some of your issues get hidden. Sometimes the enemy team is just not strong enough to highlight those issues, right? And Fnatic's downfall, you know, th their issues was they didn't know how to play uh, the early game well. They didn't know how to play the Rift Herald game well. They didn't know how to play uh, the bot lane matchups. These were very heavy issues. And then sometimes, sometimes you can be put in a situation where, um, you know, sometimes you can get away with those problems, sometimes you cannot. And um, in that context, when players are trying to figure out a way to maneuver themselves in that environment where they are aware of these issues, they're going to try to hypercorrect and try to do things that are not not logic based. As Eva mentioned, right? It's like him and Marek tried to overreach and try to overcarry the game, which ended up them losing more and looking very bad. Sometimes in your, if you're in an environment that is so dysfunctional, you know, trying to be the person that fixes it all can have a negative effect. The, 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 the main issue for Fnatic, right, is that a lot of the teams around them like, if you look at the bot lanes that were very strong, this split, there were so many of them, right? You have Kobe Yonghun, and this was a team that was supposed to be last place, right? Kobe Yonghun did fantastic. Exakick and uh, Dos did insanely well. Crowny, Labrov, really good. You have, um, uh, of course, Hansama and Miki. You have Karzi Hilly. This was a situation, you know, the, the, the way Europe played out and the way the meta played out, you were not allowed to have a weak bottom side. You will get broken apart if you have a weak bottom side. And then the other outliers, the other teams, for example, Vitality and so forth, they had 
very very st- strong 2v2 mid and this was a big weakness you know for for uh fanatic not necessarily that they are weak players but they just didn't have a good level of accuracy around the 2v2 mid and how to leverage that right so all of the issues that fanatic has also around the rift herald it's like in a lot of cases if you manage to secure rift herald you would snowball the game these were issues that fanatic had and in the context of what this split was, these issues were even, you know, a bigger spotlight was shone upon these issues due to the context of the meta and the other teams that were their opposition. So their weaknesses looked even worse. And when the players begin to realize there is no solution to those weaknesses, they begin to band-aid fix things, right? We saw it with Wunder trying to play the, those carry champions, right, with the Camille pick. There was the, the bot lane situation with trying to play melee supports. These are all band-aid solutions, and all of the players are aware of the truth. And that truth becomes heavier and heavier each game that you play. And trying to convince yourself to co- go into the game with motivation and with the right attitude, and in the essence uh, trying to grow, is not possible. If you are in the state of mind that you already have to band-aid solve your issues, in the beginning of a split just due to how high the stakes have been elevated due to the new format you are done there will be no improvement you are trying to put flex tape on the ship that has a lot of holes and in this format you'll be brutally crushed through it and this is my way of summarizing uh, what has what has happened to fanatic they had very clear weaknesses. The meta really, really shoved the fist into the, that weakness. You don't have time to fix it. You band-aid solve it. You can't breathe. You can't improve. And then the truth becomes heavier and heavier. And eventually reaches the point where convincing yourself that you can win becomes too difficult. And in that process... You're going to have players that are trying to overperform in order to achieve something, and they're going to look like they're ending uh, due to it. And uh, I can assure you, each player on this team, well, I can say for a certain fact, Humanoid, Razork, and Wunder, these are three players that, even if, if, if they stay or don't stay in this team, I can assure you in the next team that they go into, that they will look so much better again. Right? They will look fantastic. These are very, very high tier players. I can't say the same for Reckless and Rux, right? Because I haven't had the pleasure of working with them, right? Rux, he had two games of Worlds, were good. I'm very grateful for that. But I don't know more about Rux. Reckless as well, right? The same thing happened to, to Hilly, right? It's like Hilly, in the context of Fnatic and what our team was, he couldn't perform there. Right? And now he's in Mad Lions, and the environment is much more functional. He's more connected to his teammates. Mac is doing a wonderful job. I'm only hearing fantastic things about Mac. And this is an environment where Hilly can thrive. Our environment last year, the compromises I needed to make to make it function were, you know, at the detriment of others always. And it was, it was basically a game of trying to put it's like the the players are so different and their needs that the group was so different in every other direction that i always had to try to play this game where i'm moving like these let's say stones and put them on weights it's like i had to take something from this player to put on this player and then i had to move it and i had to find like some weird balance to just try to keep it together All in all, um, yeah, obviously, like sending death threats, it's like, you know, some people out there, you know, their whole identity is to be a fan of Fnatic. I think if your whole identity is to be a fan of a game, uh, you know, you should rethink your life. Uh, anyone that has their whole identity as a fan, you know, you have, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, those guys, I, it's like, don't give them any power. You know, don't give them any power because these guys are trying to gain power by just being loud and and big and obnoxious. So, 
just ignore them for the most part. You know, the the the, the hard thing, the, the weird thing about being a fanatic is that even if you don't look it up, you know you're getting flamed to shit, you know? So it's like, it's always something that is gnawing, gnawing in the back of your head. Uh, to, to, to remove yourself from the situation still takes effort. So it is something that every player and every staff member needs to deal deal with, you know? It's like every, you, you have to deal with it whether you like it or not. And I, I am a pretty, I guess I would call myself stoic person. I don't really give a damn, but it takes effort to not give a damn. You get me? To remind yourself to not give a damn. And uh, it's like, you know, when you sign with Fnatic, you know, the big argument that they always give you is like, oh, you will get uh, paid a little bit less, but keep in mind, you're in Fnatic. You're going to, uh, you're going to be shipped to stardom. Uh, but I think borderline, <laughs> you should be paid more to be dealing with all of the bullshit. <laughs> I um, hope Ivan is going to do all right. I hope Ivan doesn't let uh, his experience shape his whole perspective because Ivan as a player, Razorg as a player has grown so much and I still have full faith in uh, the players that I worked with in the past. I am curious about uh, what happens next and we shall see. There's definitely a lot of great Fnatic fans out there, right? It's always, you know, the extremes that are always the most loud, right? And um, all in all, I think pointing fingers on anyone in this roster is very difficult. I think it's very difficult. Ivan had some, some, some poor games, right? But he was, you know, distributing his effort in a way that he thought this dysfunctional team would work. That's the main thing, right? If you're in a dysfunctional environment and you're trying to make it work, you're going to try things that maybe are more radical, and you're going to try things different in order to make things work. And in that pursuit of trying to chase something in that moment to just try to get a win, you might look so much worse. And sometimes that's a better risk to take than to just sit around and wait for your inevitable doom. So keep this in mind. For all the Yamato Canon viewers out there, remember that players in the right context can flourish and players in different contexts can definitely be a lot worse. And sometimes, you know, the group just doesn't, uh, doesn't work. <laughs>